Welcome back to the Realm of Unpopular Opinions. Today I will be attempting to make a coherent August reading wrap-up because I liked how the last one went. I think it's a very fun way to catch up and to give many reviews without giving actual full-blown reviews because we all know that I don't like doing that without spoilers. And if you look at the views, people like wrap-ups too. So today we will be attempting to be articulate. As you can see, I already need the coffee for this because let me know what the weather is like in your country because where I live, it's flip-flopping between really hot and really cold right now. So I am just trying to survive. Without rambling too much, let's get into the video. The first book that I read, I think I began it in July because I can see that on my Goodreads it's noted as the 31st of July, but I put it in August on my bullet journal. So I think I finished it in August, I just didn't log it on Goodreads. And that will be Watchmen. I did a reread, as you can remember from the last wrap up. I did a reread of V for Vendetta when I was on holiday down at the seaside. And I cannot read V for Vendetta without reading Watchmen because I love them almost equally at this point, which is weird because last time I definitely preferred Vendetta. But Watchmen really grew on me. I think it's my favorite comic book, like not comic book, but comic book heroes of all time now. I watched the movie immediately afterwards. So... I think that also helped my love for this because the movie for Vendetta is atrocious but as I already said and I won't repeat myself the movie for Watchmen is the greatest adaptation of all time. I watched the extended edition that's like interspersed with the Black Freighter animated series that they did and Jared Butler <laughs> and Moriarty from the film Sherlock Holmes Game of Shadows they're the main, main voices in that and they have wonderful voices. So without talking too much about the movie, this isn't a movie review. I absolutely adored Watchmen even more the second time that I read it because I realized how much I actually love Rorschach. I love all of the characters. There is no need to say that because Alan Moore is freaking brilliant. But this time around, I felt even more for Rorschach and I was a little bit more upset at the ending. But it was still wonderful and it's, it remains one of my favorite endings to a comic book story of all time because Marvel and DC could never that's all that I will say Marvel and DC could never this is just a new level and I adored it even more than I adored it last summer so if you haven't read Watchmen or V for Vendetta yet I don't need to be the one to tell you to do it because <laughs> I have said enough but if you're looking for a great perfect letter to letter perfect casting and score adaptation then look at Watchmen. The only thing is that it's like four hours long if you watch the extended edition but believe me it's worth it and this is a story that is a parody essentially on Marvel and DC. That's at least how I look at it in the classic Alan Moore style and as I already said the art is like colored in extremes on purpose because it's because it's a parody so I don't need to say anything else about this. Go, go read it so we can talk about it. Next I read Anne's House of Dreams, which I put up already, but I don't have this physical copy because I don't think I will be buying it. I have been reading Anne over the last nine-ish months because I have, as I already said, that ebook where it, all the books are included and I think I will buy Anne of the Island which is book three I already have the first two but I don't think I will be buying anything past that I don't even I won't even read anything past Anne's House of Dreams because the quality rapidly decreases as Montgomery suffers in her private life it's something like Ursula when you return to a story that you wrote when you were in a different mindset it's not going to be as good and it's not going to be the same. <laughs> so Anne of the Island was the last book that truly felt like Anne. I think the next one, which was like Anne of, Anne of Windy Poplars, I want to say. I did not even get through that. I couldn't because the entire book was Anne talking about someone else <laughs> and nothing really happening. It was told through letters 
I did not even read that one. And then I read Anne's House of Dreams, which wasn't that painful to get through, but I don't think I will ever want to read it again, really, because Anne turns from someone who is free-spirited and different than the time period that she's in. She just turns into, like, a person that's like everyone else. She just turns into a damn housewife and thinks about children all the time. Has nothing to do because she had to quit her job to be Gilbert's wife. So, yeah, I don't didn't appreciate that at all and you can tell that there's a depressed sort of air that montgomery put in the book because she herself at that time was unhappily married and suffering in a marriage that she had to go through so i don't want to read that and thank you i read like summaries for the next few books and apparently it's even worse she becomes like just an angry housewife and it's about her angry kids so no thank you i will not be reading as house of dreams and anything past that again so I gave that three three stars, I think, because it wasn't that difficult to get through and there were still some enjoyable characters. Like, for example, that her neighbor, who absolutely hates men, I love her and she was an icon, but then in the end she gets mar married too, so I was a little bit disappointed by that. But I really, really have nothing else to say about this. If you enjoyed the first three books, do yourself a favor and stop there. That is all I will say about Anne's House of Dreams and I think three stars now in retrospect is a little generous but at the time I wasn't really angry at it so I think it's fair not to go lower. Now I will lump, clump, <laughs> lump the next few together because I do not have the other ones to show you so I continued reading the Bungo Stray Dogs light novels. Continued. I started this month. But the first one I read was the second one. This is the first one, but the first one is the only one that I own. Now, admission. But for manga and light novels, I like finding them online because there's a lot of them and they're expensive usually. So I like to check if I will enjoy it before I buy it. This was the only one that I bought blindly, but I knew that I would enjoy it because it's about my favorite character. So I knew that I would enjoy it, so I bought it immediately. But the rest... I read online, tried to find them online, and read the ones that were completed. But <laughs> it's a weird thing to get angry when, like, an illegal translation isn't completed. But in my opinion, you can find everything online at this point. So don't put it up if it's incomplete. That will just piss me off. Just say it's unavailable and I will be forced to buy it anyway. But if you give me, like, 80% of the novel to read and then cut it off, I will be very pissed off. That's what happened to me yesterday with two of the novels. And I will buy them because I've read enough to know that I want to buy them. But I was very angry. <laughs> so that aside, I read three of the novels in total. I read this one, which is the first one, which is Dazai's Entrance Exam. I read the second one, which is The Dark Era. And I read Dazai and Julia when they were 15. That one I don't think has even come out in English, but that one has been translated by fans, like, in totally, completely. <laughs> so I read those three, and the others I read, like, halfway, I think. I don't think I logged any else. Yeah. Okay, so let's just go through them. I gave them all five stars because it's clear that this author, Kafka, I think is his name, <laughs> pen name, I think he is way better at novels because he's one of those manga writers that doesn't draw he just writes and I think the format of novels is way better for him because I don't really like the manga especially where it's at right now I don't really like the manga but the novels have been incredible because they've been jam-packed with emotion and <laughs> I think it just suits him a lot better to write novels because the detailing is easier to read than his sloppy plot work if that makes sense in the main story where he doesn't have to describe anything he just writes dialogue so I think novels are the way to go for this author and okay this one I gave five stars no question it was great but I did not really like how because this anime is my favorite anime of all time and I did not like <laughs> what they did with this novel in the anime like I it might seem like I'm talking too long about this, but it's three novels, so I will just get into it. They adapted almost all of the light novels, but they did some of them more justice and some of them sloppily. I think they did this one sloppily. 
because they threw it spoilers i mean if you've watched the anime spoilers <laughs> but again i don't think it's not big spoilers anyway nothing that relevant happens here but they did this in the anime in the way that they shoved in everything that happened but cut out everything that was actually important about it like <laughs> This is basically a prequel, how Dazai came into the detective agency and they shoved the cases into the anime, but not the bonding between Dazai and Kunikida, which I really didn't appreciate. That was the entire point of this. So I I will watch the anime again and I'm not, not a fan of this right now. It used to be my favorite arc in the anime, but now I'm a little pissed off, if we're going to be honest. Like, this arc didn't need Atsushi in it because... Because it was like this for a reason. Anyway, <laughs> I will not talk about this anymore. So this is the entrance exam. And I didn't know the entrance exam would be the whole plot of the anime that they shoved in. So the second one, Dark Era, they did that one justice. That's the first four episodes of season two. I have never cried as much as I have cried on the second light novel. It has four chapters, like four chunks. And I... I think I sobbed at each one, like genuinely choking in tears. We will not be talking about that one further. Like it's gut wrenching in the show. It is even worse <laughs> when you read it with all the extra context. And I will tell you one thing that if you know what it is, it'll tell you everything you need to know. The book is from Odasaku's point of view. I will say nothing else. And the third one that I read was, I gave them all five stars again, as I said. And the third one was Daza and Chuyo when they were 15. That one didn't make me cry. It didn't make me a little bit depressed. But overall, I really enjoyed it. And again, they sort of adapted it correctly. But it was a little bit strange how they got rid of the villain in the anime. In the book, it's actually clever. Dazai style clever, not just... Let's clasp hands and that'll work somehow. I never understood how that worked in the anime. In the book, it's not like that and it actually makes sense. So I've talked enough, but this is my favorite series. So, so I do apologize for this long rant. And I wanted to be thorough with the reviews because these three are, I think, the main novels of the novels that I will read. So I want to do them justice and let you know that I actually loved them and that if you like the show the novels are way more worth it than the manga. I'm sorry this is just a little interlude but I have to ask you one thing because I need confirmation. In the books all the time when someone's introducing Dazai they say that he has black hair. Does that look like black hair to you? <laughs> Like, he has dark brown hair, which can be interpreted as black. When I was younger, everyone said I had black hair, even though I definitely had dark brown. But this is, on your own book, this is not black hair. And that is, that is all that I have to say. Support me in the comments. I will not talk too, <laughs> too much about this because I already ranted enough in a vlog, but Kenobi. Kenobi is a book that I started back in July. It took me... <laughs> three weeks to read it not because of lack of interest but because I'm just not in the mood for some things at certain times I'm sure you can relate to that if you're a mood reader but I already said in the vlog I really enjoyed this and I don't rate it based on the book I rate it based on the main plot line because all of the Star Wars books that aren't the main novelizations have side characters that you generally don't care about but they do somehow tie into the main plot line so i rate it based on how much i enjoyed the main plot line which in this case is kenobi on tatooine and how the plot tied in and helped kenobi on tatooine i don't really rate it based on the fact that i was bored with every other pov so i gave this five stars but if i were to rate it critically if i wanted to it would be lower but we are not doing that here so, if you're interested in Kenobi and what he was up to, I read this because, primarily, I bought this because I heard that the Kenobi show would be about him on Tatooine. So I wanted to see what George Rurus had to say about it before Disney gave me their shit. 
And I loved it. I really loved it. But I think that as soon as they paste to late legends on this, that they're not going to follow it. In any case, I loved it. The only thing I think it missed was maybe like an interaction with baby Luke. But aside from that, I loved everything about it. Like I loved the thoughts. I loved the story about his guilt and about how he feels. I love the little snippets of meditations where he talks to Qui-Gon or tries to talk to Qui-Gon and with the Tuscans how it came full circle from Anakin to now and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed how he isn't really suffering. You can tell that he's accepted this and almost wanted it but at the same time how he's a little bit sad all the time even though he chose to stay here and make it his duty i have been <laughs> incoherent with this one but that's only because i already talked about it in a vlog and i find it sometimes very difficult to repeat myself word for word so i loved kenobi and if you enjoy star wars i think it's a worthy read just don't be discouraged by the fact that there's many other points of view you can just skim through them and it'll tie in with the main storyline in a pretty nice way i think the next book that we have to talk about is going to be controversial not the book but the opinion the silent patient i read that in a day as a preface but i gave it three stars now let's let's unpack this because this is a cult phenomenon even though it came out two years ago but i read this in a day which is why i deserved the three stars if something is easy to get through and i find it not a chore to finish it then i consider it at least average but everything else didn't increase the rating i have discovered that all of the i've probably been reading the wrong ones and i will give them another try but i've found that all of the thrillers <laughs> that or mysteries that I read so far have been really, really lacking. Now, I love shows, mostly shows, not really movies like Poro or Marple or Prime Suspect that I watched this month, or I love shows like that because I love watching mysteries as they happen, like little glances and how someone reacts and figuring things out from the reactions of people. I don't think, <laughs> in my own opinion, that you can accurately portray that in books. Because if you get me, I cannot understand anything or make my own conclusions with what the author gives me. There's nothing beyond the author's intent and exactly each word that they give me that I can make my conclusions. In shows, you can always see how someone, I mean, that's obviously also the author's intent, you can pick up on how someone looks at someone or how someone picks something up or how someone replies shakily and not like i don't know i feel like the visual visual cues are just easier to pick up on than the sentences that the author gives you there's no way you can figure out a mystery in a book on your own unless the author wants you to <laughs> and i don't really like that about the genre but that isn't why i rated this low I rated this low because I expected the mystery, like, excellent setup, really, really boring conclusion. Not disappointing, really, because I feel like it fits well, but for me personally, it was just, the only word that I could think of when I finished it was lame. It was just so lame. <laughs> like, it, it was okay, and the explanation was fine. But it was just so pathetic. Throughout the book, I thought, okay, both of these people suck. <laughs> They're both lame and weak and boring to read from. The twist better be something exciting and something that will make me think, oh, they're not actually just two lame people. But they were. They just were. <laughs> I won't tell you anything about the conclusion. Obviously, this is a mystery, but the only thought that I had was lame, 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 lame. Not sorry that I read it, but I do not understand the hype and how it has so many good reviews in only two years and so many awards. It's nothing revolutionary. And in my own, again, humble opinion, 
I think it was a little bit cheap. And I hate saying it, but what happens in the end? I had many theories about what would happen and they all turned out more exciting than what actually happened. So I think you could enjoy this. But again, this is a book where it really depends on what you like. I will never say that you shouldn't read it because it might be your cup of tea. But it definitely was not mine. That's all that I'm getting at. And I've been talking about it for too long because I really want to articulate myself on why I didn't like this really, really popular book. So yes not my cup of tea i will be reading more mysteries but this was not a step in the correct direction let me know if you read the silent patient if you worship it or if you actually have thoughts that are more similar to mine because i have yet to find someone who didn't enjoy this now the next one is a short little book that i already also said in the log that i will be reading and that is the labyrinth of bones it was the maze of the maze of bones i'm not sure what it is in english let me actually let me let me be accurate and check the maze of bones by rick riordan i thought this entire series was written by rick riordan then i found out that every book is written by a new author which i did not know but this is a middle grade 39 clues it's a book that i really really loved as a kid because in every book they travel to a new place and I liked that. I liked the setting change. I think it was very interesting and I wanted to give it another try. But I think I've read the first book too many times for it to be fun for me. Like it was still enjoyable, but I gave it four stars. I don't think it's that exciting because a lot of the book, and these are short books, it's middle grade. A lot of the book is wasted on character introductions and not so much on the destination. And I think the next ones will fix that. I will read the next ones because now it's the magical readathon in September and I will need short reads desperately. So I did enjoy this, but I think again, I read it too many times to be really, really amused by it. And I will say that as someone who primarily consumes English, talks in English and thinks in English, I'm not even kidding, and writes a book. It is getting increasingly difficult for me to read my own language. It's not that I can't, it's that it tires me. Because my I'm, I'm wired to English, so it's really confusing to me when I read my own language. I haven't read anything in my own language since high school. So yeah, that was just a fun side effect. If you're someone who's not a native speaker but you consume so much English let me know what the relationship with your own language is because mine is rapidly dying and I hope that once I move eventually it will completely die because I hate my language <laughs> but yeah this was a little bit difficult for me to read I wish I had the original but I still got through it I still got through it even though the translations are so awkward at times we have two more to get through and one of these was a surprise edition and the second is just a book that is currently being read. This is the last one that I completed in August and that is The Last Wish by Andrei Sapkowski. I did not intend to read The Witcher this month. I knew I wanted to read it for like a while now but I watched The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf on Netflix and I was back in that mood. And then one day someone just played the Bard song from the show, which is the only thing that I tolerate. And I was just really into it. So I picked up Last Wish and it, again, read it in a day. I mean, these are sh really short books. It's like, what, below 300 pages. Under 300 pages. But I adored this so much more than the first time, which I didn't think was possible. I already said in all of my videos from last year that I was a bit turned off from the series after the last book. I didn't like even read the eighth one. But now that I'm going again with the knowledge of what happens in the end and taking it less seriously, I mean these first three books are perfection in my opinion but I like it even more now because I read it casually and not expecting a satisfying conclusion as it should be read. 
this was absolutely a gem i forgot how much i love like the really really dry sarcastic slavic humor if there's one thing i like about us it's the humor <laughs> and the curses these this is just short stories but it's like mixed with certain snippets of the present and then you look back on what happened in the form of a short story but Sipkowski has such an ability to make you love his characters within two seconds. I would die for Geralt and Dandelion without question. And the short story that I like the most, I think, might be the last one. It might be the last one because of the genie thing, because of what the first wish was. I don't know. I love all of them equally, if I'm, if I'm completely honest, but yeah, I read that in a day, didn't expect to, but I loved it beyond what I thought I would. I was scared that it would be ruined for me by the fact that the last book was how it was, but it wasn't. It wasn't at all. I also planned to read Sword of Destiny immediately afterward, but I just wasn't in the mood these last few days. I was just finishing up an anime, but... This is a worthy end of the month and I might do dedicated vlogs for one of the books, maybe the next one. Let me know if you would like that because I haven't done a spoiler vlog in a while. Like the last one was Attack on Titan and Shadow and Bone, but those were really long. Um, if I make another one, I'm going to make sure that it's below the one hour mark so let me know if you would like a dedicated vlog for one of the witcher books because i know that i really love dedicated vlogs because you get to talk about spoilers so again i can say that i recommend it now that i've read it twice the last thing is books that are ongoing now i started but i'm at like chapter one of 39 clues 2 and I am in the middle of one of the light novels, but I won't mention that because I'm not even sure if those are complete. So the last thing I will talk about is The Great Hunt. <laughs> I'm holding it up like this because I took off all the dust jackets except for the pretty ones, so they look decent on the shelf. So I will just hold it up like this. But I started Great Hunt because I was just craving the world again. <laughs> I think anytime that I see anything to do with adaptations of all my favorite books I just start craving the actual world because I want to wipe the other thing from my mind but I think I read like not that much 50-ish pages that's like five five or six chapters but I started very recently and I hope that I will finish it in September I had a plan to read about one book a month because these are chunkers and especially because I already read them, I'm not really going to want to rush through them. I just want to take it in and see the details and appreciate the prose and the characters. But I already can say that I really, really missed it. I read books one, two, and I don't know, whatever else, like back in 2018. So it's been a while since I read them, which means that I am excited about them again. And I forgot how short the chapters were because I read the last half of the series for so long that I was used to chapters that were like 40 to 50 pages long. It's really refreshing to see how short they were in the beginning and I'm really happy that I'm back in the world. I will not make dedicated vlogs for these I think. I only have one for Wheel of Time which is Memory of Light which is just as well because I will never read that book again but I am very happy that I'm reading this again and I hope to get to like book four by the time the show is out so I can comfortably not care about it when it does come out and just enjoy what I have what I have with with this series and with this world I will never tell you not to watch the show because that is absolutely your business I am not I am not God <laughs> with the only authority on this book because millions of people have read it but I know that I will not be watching it and I definitely will not change my mind. <laughs> so this was absolutely great. Read just a little bit, but I really feel like I'm coming home. That wraps up my wrap up. As you can see, I rearranged my shelves 
just as a final comment because this needed to <laughs> needed to have some room because it's a large box set so like the shelves look a little different now i will do a, another bookshelf tour like at the end of the year just like i did last year hopefully it'll be a bit more quality because last time all the flickering lights but i am rambling so i hope you enjoyed this i hope you didn't find all the rambling too boring because i don't do dedicated reviews so now that i'm doing wrap-ups i'm actually going to do my best to talk properly about the books not just give them two sentences and just be like okay i liked this the main character is great five stars because that is frankly a little bit boring and as always because these videos are longer there will be timestamps in the description so if you don't feel like hearing about one of those books which i respect because I skip around in wrap-ups all the time if I'm not interested in a certain genre. You can skip around and just listen to what you're interested in and I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you <laughs> had a great month. Let me know how many books you read because I think that it was a decent month, month for me. I read some books in a day and some books took a bit more time but I enjoyed the majority of them. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in my next one, which will be probably the magical readathon vlog because September is going to be busy the last month before university. Wish me luck and I will see you in the next video.